The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well then, queens of the bun age, bun naked ladies, 21 bunnies, bunkini thrill cult. Guess what, bunny? Guess what? 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 Guess. Guess. Twelve. Uh, twelve. Jeannie Is says, it twelve? Jeannie says twelve. I'm going to guess broccoli. No, 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 my herbal amigo. Oh. It is homework time once again on the Popon Film Podcast. Ahem, 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 in parentheses. <laughs> People of the internet, your attention, please. Cease your erotic fan fiction writing and kindly pay attention. Each week, the Citadel of Genies selects a homework assignment via the fiery ritual of carousel. <laughs> yeah. A homework assignment specifically created to better the show's listeners. Nay, human beings everywhere. Except you, Suzanne Plachette. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. She knows why. Yes. She knows why. <laughs> and this week, you can have a homework assignment, or for just nineteen ninety five, you can have two homework assignments, a soda, and a box of candy. Mm -hmm. For only nineteen ninety five. What a deal. And hey, don't forget our wide selection of lame 90s video games, a.k.a. 45 unrented copies of Pokemon Snap. <laughs> and be sure and check out our low-priced array of used videotapes that no one gives a crap about anymore. What? Anaconda 2 for only $17.99? What a bargain! <laughs> And don't worry, we got all those R and NC-17 movies and edited the crap out of them so your <laughs> delicate sensibilities won't be offended. You're welcome, white America. <laughs> oh, oh, and watch out. About 65% of the candies have been there for a year, at least five years. Yes. Five, five years or more. And everything's blue. Yes, it is. Oh, and also, also a very important, you will be fined if you don't do this. At the end of this week's homework assignment, please rewind it. Yes. It's very important. Be kind and rewind this week's homework assignment. Yes, this week, if it's not clear already, hopefully it is. I think I nailed it, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. I think I did a great This week, we are watching a blast from corporate past. The 1990 blockbuster video training video. Mm -hmm. We are now fully trained for jobs that no longer exist. Yes, yes, yes. Now, full disclosure, I actually spent a year and a half working for Hollywood Video, which was Blockbuster Video's clear rival. Mm -hmm. uh, not really. Uh, it 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 was a it was a rivalry in the same sense that oh. Here is Walmart, and here is Dollar Tree. <laughs> and the Dollar Tree employees are all like, oh, yeah, one day we're going to beat that Walmart. And the Walmart people are like, what's a Dollar Tree? Well, I don't know. See, I, I always it's always seemed to me like Hollywood video um, had more artsy films. Yeah, than blockbuster. Like I, w if you go into Hollywood Video, you would expect to see this week's movie there, but you wouldn't yeah. be surprised if Blockbuster wouldn't carry it. Yeah, yeah, you know? it, and that's because the the Hollywood Video, the the managers who worked there had more uh, flexibility with ordering films into uh -huh. the store, which 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 they can then rent. Like each store, each individual store could order what they wanted on top of the popular things. Nice. That they had Good. to carry. Which is why my store's cult movie section was huge. <laughs> nice. It was huge. It was huge. Went into that store. Let me see your cult movie section. Oh, you have 25 videos. Yeah. That's going to change. 
Except <laughs> so I, we I, I still I best. still miss my old video store. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's something our generation gets weepy over. Yep. You yep. know. Yeah. Yep. But oh man, because we had they were they were they were a vacuum repair place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then they started they started stocking videos. And then eventually the videos took over the store and the vacuums were pushed out. And then they got a bigger store. They had basically a blockbuster size store size store. I yeah. guess I miss that place. Yeah. My store had the best cult movie section. We had Plan 9, The Indestructible Man, Monster on the Campus, and right before I was fired, I ordered about 25 episodes of Mystery Science Theater. Nice. So I hope you had fun with that, guys. That should be arriving uh, right about the time my last paycheck is going to arrive to me. So have fun with those 25 copies of Mystery Science Theater you now have to rent. <laughs> So, at Hollywood Video, it was understood that Blockbuster Video was heartless and corporate, while uh, the people at Hollywood Video felt like the plucky underdogs. But it, it really didn't matter. Both were stupid. And I was fired after a year and a half for gross negligence, apparently hating your job and actively wanting the store to explode in a fiery apocalypse is against store policy. <laughs> I did not realize that. And again, I don't know what happened to that VHS player that went missing. <laughs> and that N64 system. That was a freak accident. Who knows where that went? That yeah. was... And all those videotapes that also went missing. That was an act of God. <laughs> so I, I don't what, see how you can blame me for that one. What made you hate it so much? I mean, it seems like that would have been like your job. It it was weird. All the people who worked there were uh, the youngest legal age you could work. Yeah. So all these like 16 year olds and 17 year olds. And then here you are, like you're 21 years old and you're you're walking into this place. All the managers were horrible. One of the managers it was just a walking, talking sexual harassment lawsuit. <laughs> he, he was the store manager and he kept a autographed picture of Jenna Jameson on his desk. <laughs> nice. Because he hoped to one day be an adult film actor. Okay. And then there was a his assistant store manager was like twenty years old, and he would smoke in the store. Yeah. And even though it was against policy, and it was just very badly run, and the district manager just just hated everyone, and it it, it was it was just really bad, and. You always had to have at least one other person working with you unless it was me and then everyone would call out sick and and it would just be like me. I would end up literally I would be like Dante Hicksing it. Oh, yeah. And I would come into work at noon and then it's like, oh, Steve, yeah, sorry, but there were some call outs and some some sick calls and this person just no called, no showed. So you're working from noon to midnight. Yeah. By yourself. Have fun. Bye. So, yeah, no, that wasn't fun. That was not a fun time. Okay. So this videotape really triggered my PTSD working in the video stacks, dressing like an idiot. Mm -hmm. Like there was there was pain watching this. However, I will say that I love the nerd looking for Casino Royale. In yeah. the future, you should listen to our podcast. That was a good episode. Yes, it was. There's no way that this like wide-eyed Felicity wannabe automatically knew uh, Casino Royale. There's no way she had that knowledge. <laughs> There's no way that 16-year-old girl is like, oh, Woody Allen and Peter Sellers, you must be talking about Casino Royale. <laughs> no, no, no way that this 16-year-old Mormon knew that shit. <laughs> So let's let's explain the movie. Let's explain this blockbuster video training video in a way too long uh, rambling sentence. Yes. 
Okay, so a wide-eyed, felicity-haired 17-year-old blockbuster video employee and the epitome of white privilege is learning how to drink the corporate Kool-Aid at the Blockbuster Corporation by having a psychotic breakdown and imagining a magical Dollar Tree Robin Williams who teaches her how to be that one sore employee that you want to strangle to death and hide the body behind the massive wall of unrented honey I shrunk the kids. That was all <laughs> one sentence, bitches. Welcome to Blockbuster University. <laughs> <laughs> there are a crap ton of these videos in 1989 1990 1994 1998 but i went with 1990 because it seemed more straightforward yeah the right. other ones are like high concept ones there's one with two siskel and ebert rejects teaching you corporate values and it's like okay they you're going for like a like a weird parody and then this one's kind of like a like a fake art film but then boom this one the reason why i picked 1990 is that this one seems more straightforward. It could be any major corporation's video. Yes. Like, you could just get this idea and put it in Sears or Home Depot or what would they have in the 80s or 90s? The Lisa Frank store. Yeah. I'm not sure if it existed, but I'm assuming it did. Trapper Keeper Warehouse. Yes. What are you looking at, Maxwell? You were like literally on top of me studying my facial hair. What are you? What are you? What are you doing? Uh, I like to white hairs out there. You're looking for white hairs. Okay, all of my there's a I have a big one right here on the side somewhere. All my <laughs> life, okay, yeah, all my life I have wanted a ton of white hairs because I thought it would make me look old and distinguished. People always say I look younger than I do. So all my life I've wanted a bunch of white hairs, and guess what? I have a bunch of white hairs. Do you want to know where they are? Where? They're all in my nose. <laughs> yeah, I got like five of them in here. I got like ten of them having a freaking party in this nostril. Yeah, yeah. All of my white hairs are in my nose. Yeah. Dad. yeah? <laughs> I, think I had a lot of black hair. You do. But, but you. I actually. I wish I had a lot of. Your hair black is black. Hairs, okay. But yeah. They're in my nose. Yeah. Yeah. You and wish you had nose hair. hair like your daddy is what you're saying. And. They're in my boogers. Yeah, they're in your boogers. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think so, that's a worthy goal for him to set. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you, you get to that age, like when you're five or six, and you just want nose hair like your father. Yeah. That's just something that everybody goes, everybody goes through. <laughs> oh man, I would just lay in bed dreaming of having my dad's nose hair. You know, <laughs> as well. It's just something that. That boys go through. Mommy wouldn't understand. No. Yeah. It's a guy thing. You know. So this is a 17 or 18 minute video. It's intended to train employees not to miss out on opportunities for sales. Yes. There's a lot wrong with this video. Oh, God, yes. Number one. Everyone hates the employee that knows you. <laughs> Oh, hi, Steve. How's your mother doing? Is her leg better? Yeah. It's like, dude, just give me my fucking coffee. <laughs> you don't know me. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. And, and here's another thing. This is personal. This is personal. Okay. Yeah. Hey, corporate. No one wants to rent a VHS player. <laughs> no one. Wants to rent a VHS player. I, Renting a I VHS player costs as much as buying a cheap ass VHS player. No one wants to rent your VHS player, Blockbuster. Yeah, but before we had a VHS player, I did rent them. Yeah, you so, can you can con people into I renting them. That's that's I not a thing. But but you could also just say like, yeah, you can rent this. It's it's this much for these uh, days. Or uh, you can just go to Kmart because mm -hmm. that's still a thing. It's 1990. Yes. Yes, Maxwell. Yeah. Uh, the store that has VHA players are losers. Hashtag losers. <laughs> okay. Do that. Write that. <laughs> I should write that down on the podcast? Yeah. Okay. Number one, you have no idea what a VHS player is. If I do it, it's a revenge that broke when I made it. 
<laughs> it's an invention that broke when you made it? Okay. In my lab. In your lab. Okay, sure. So, uh... It doesn't have a dog in it. You don't know what a VHS player... RCAs did have dogs in it. They had little pictures of dogs. That was the RCA's logo. Yes. But anyway. Uh... So, so number two, no one wants to rent a VHS player. Number three, and this is important, there is no number three. Mm-hmm. And number four, the store looks so sparse. And yes, I guess did. that's how all blockbusters looked. And I guess it just takes and, uh, time for me to look at it. But you see like a videotape and then like, like eight inches and then another videotape on the shelf and then yeah. eight inches. And then another videotape. Like, what are you renting videos or selling wood? That's what my <laughs> old dish manager would have said. Are we selling wood fixtures? Is that what we're doing? Because I see a lot of space here. Space that can be used to put product. We sell things. <laughs> Not selling wood. That's what that's what my manager, Pete Scott, would say. We're not selling wood here, people. But yeah, they all look so so, yeah, they look so empty. I was so blown away by that. They all yeah. look so empty. But I guess that was a blockbuster. Oh, what a difference. <laughs> blockbuster video. What was your favorite part, Bunny? Um, God, there were so many to choose from. So uh, Felicity was a good call on the girl. I kind of see her more as a Heather Langelier type. Yeah. You know, yeah. from Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, yeah. She was so perky, I wanted to drown her. Yeah. Oh, hell yeah. You know, nobody, nobody should be that into their job. Yes. Ever. Agreed. You know? Agreed. The Casino Royale bit was very good. Um Buster was just creepy, you know? Yes. Yes, he was. He could see your every move and he like lives inside your head. Like, yeah. What the fuck is that? Yeah. No, I do not know. You know, I do not know what that is. So like some, does she wake up in the middle of the night with Buster's voice going, push the raisinettes. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah, that's that's a bleak post-apocalyptic future where corporate can now get into your brain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they so, like, would want to. Yeah, so you're sleeping and you're having corporate dreams that tell you what to do the next day that you work. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's good old-fashioned nightmare fuel. <laughs> And that was it. It was all how to push different products. Yeah. That's what the whole video was. And and I was entertained by the fact that we were being trained for jobs that no longer exist. Yeah. Except in Alaska, there's like five blockbusters still in Alaska. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're not in Alaska, this isn't helping you out. <laughs> no, it's not. So, Yeah. So anyway, that is it for homework this week. And we here at the Pope on Film sincerely hope that your hearts, minds, and painful scars have all been suitably opened. Scar tissue. Scar tissue. (laughs) See, the good thing about singing Red Hot Chili Peppers, you don't need to know any of the lyrics. No, you don't. And then occasionally you just got to chime in with like a a city or a street from L.A. (laughs) Santa Barbara. (laughs) And that's every Red Hot Chili Peppers song. Ah, but don't forget next week's homework. And next week, finally, finally, after so long. Yes. We are finally getting around to talking about Lucha Underground. Nice. Because, you know, we've never talked about it on the show before. No. On the podcast. Never. No, it's it's been pretty hush-hush on the Lucha Underground. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's about time that we we finally talk about it. So we're 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 nearing the end of season three of Lucha Underground. Very sad. Still no word on a season four. If and a big if it does come back, it will definitely no. That last one is mine. I want to I want to show I want to show it to mommy. If and uh, and again, it's a big if. If if Lucha Underground comes back at all, it'll definitely be a very different seeming show. So the end of this season is very emotional, at least for me and for a lot of the fandom. Yes. So the end of every season features a wrestle frassle WrestleMania like show called Ultima Lucha. And so this is Ultima Lucha Trace. And there was recently a match kill shot versus Dante Fox in a best of three match. One of the bloodiest and cringe worthy matches I have seen in quite a while. Wow. If I have to, th- if I have to think of the last bloody, cringe-worthy match I have seen, Mick Foley probably comes to mind, or Abdullah the Butcher, or someone like that. Yeah. Sabu, maybe old school ECW. But it has been a while since I've seen a match as uh, fierce as this, and um, so I already sent that to you. Okay, cool. Thank you. I believe I sent you a fairly bad copy of the entire episode. I was I was going to send you just the match, but I decided to send you the whole episode because the be- the opening credits and stuff, the beginning does give a good small uh, cliff notes explanation as to the Dante Fox and Killshot storyline mm-hmm. that is ending with this episode. But anyway. That is next week. That match is next week. Next week's homework. So join us next week for more homework with the Pope on Film podcast. And cut and not print. cut and print. I told you, cut and print is for the end of the podcast. <laughs> You're trying to end the show, Maxwell. Why do you keep trying to end the show? It's cut. Uh,